that real quick. Between peaks number three and four are 7,200 feet. 
going to be standing next to the entrance of North America's only commercially owned and operating amethyst mine. And it does produce some of the finest in the world today. Now there are a couple of shops back here in Goldfield carrying Fort Peaks Amethyst. If you'd like to check it out after the train ride.
drain of heat called the gold mining out here in 1895, the town had over 30 businesses and buildings in it. There were an estimated 2,500 residents all over the valley. And a thousand of them were gold miners and their families living out here among the hills and canvas wall tents. There were a dozen gold mines operating in the area at the time, but only two of those were large enough and significant enough back then. We're still talking about them today. Now going back to the 1880s, when it was getting started out here, word was spread throughout the southwest that they found gold here in the Western Superstition Mountains. Holland Sullivan, a mining company from Denver, heard about the gold being found out here, came to Arizona in 1886 and started buying up the claims. They offered Higgs and Morris $20,000 for the claims that they had at the time. And they accepted that mining company's offer. And out of the handful of claims that Holland Sullivan ended up with, two of them did pretty well. The first one was Black Queen. Between 1887 and 1897, that mine produced a half million dollars in gold. And this back when it was worth $20 an ounce. And the other claim that ended up doing well for that mining company was the Mammoth Gold Mine. And the man of gold that Higgs discovered on the other side of Goldfield over there, down the, down the hill in the wash, did lead to the largest and richest body of gold ore that was ever found out here. It was called the Mormon Stoke. And for nearly two years, the first several hundred feet of it was producing 300 ounces of gold per ton. There was a 20 stamp mill set up over there at the Mammoth Mine, processing that ore 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Between 1891 and 1897, the total gold production from the Mammoth Mine was 64,000 ounces. That had $20 an ounce. That was $1,200,000 worth. Now a bad return on that $20,000 investment. When all the other gold mines out here in the valley under different ownership produced three million during that same time period. Like a lot of other mining towns in the southwest back then, gold field didn't last very long. 1897, gold's running out, mines are shutting down, and the miners and their families are leaving the area. And the Mammoth, one of the few gold mines still operating out here, were finding veins of gold grade ore. And then the mine owners got greedy, made a decision to follow one of the veins a little bit further underground hoping it was going to turn into a larger, richer man of gold. Because they believed an old saying often heard in the mining industry. That's usually where you found it before. But this time the mining company's luck had run out. What they found instead of gold was groundwater and a lot of it. After they cracked into an aquifer flooding the mine. A couple of weeks later, still being monsoon season, the area received nearly five inches of rain in a very short period of time. Caused a lot of flash flooding out here and did a lot of damage. And the Mammoth Gold Mine being flooded from below and above shut down. And the mining company being broke packed it up and headed back to Denver. A couple of months later, if everybody got to the gold field, the United States Postal Service officially made it a ghost town when it deactivated the post office.